Hey everybody, uh, welcome into Watch Me Wednesday, episode number 27. So this is for you, Heidi. You're watching Watch Me Wednesday, episode number 27 today. Um, today I've got uh, a jam-packed episode for you. Uh, I'm going to talk about two things today. Hi everybody, hi Alberta, I'm so glad you're all here. I am going to be talking about how batiks are made, as well as something that a lot of you have been sending me emails and, uh, hey, hey Nancy, emails and commenting and posting on the Facebook page about is the new Quilty Box that is out, which I am the designer for this month. Oh, I hope it's not too cold in Atlanta, but um, it's warm here today. I'm glad you love batiks too. So, uh, Heidi, I'm seeing you in and you miss. Look at, I got flash flashcards for you today. Episode number 27 of Watch Me Wednesday. There you go, Heidi, I didn't forget. So, anyway, let's get started because I have so much to cover. So, one of the things that I was telling you about... Uh, Last the last few times is that I am the designer for Quilty Box this month. So a lot of you have received your Quilty Box already, and I'm really excited that you all love what I designed for you within the Quilty Box. I actually got mine yesterday, so I got to see what it looked like firsthand. Uh, but I'm going to actually unbox it here. I kind of reboxed it up. I had to peek at it because it was pretty exciting for me. But some of you didn't choose the the big Quilty Box. Some of you chose the Quilty Box Mini, because you could do a mini or the big one. The mini, um, I'll show you. We're gonna open that up right now, and I'll show you what's in the mini. What you get in the mini is you get a pack of um, the Blue Moon Collection. It's a charm pack of the Blue Moon Collection fabric. You get a spool of my uh, Aurifil thread collection. You get a small pattern to do with the charm pack, which is very cool. And you get the same booklet that has, oh, yours came today, great, Cindy, I'm so happy. Um, in, in here, you get this booklet, which I did read through already has a really cool interview with me that I did. So if you want to learn a little more about me, what I like, what kind of uh, gets me gets me moving as far as fabric, a little bit about the Blue Moon fabric, and you get um, the pattern that I wrote, um, which comes actually in the big box. And you also get a preview, you get a another tutorial in here, a preview of uh, next month. So let's see what's in the big quilty box, which is mostly what everybody got. And I've got something special for you guys at the end too. So stick with me to the end and also hit that share button because I think some people are going to want to see how batiks are made. I've got some props here to show you. Uh, so hit the share button so that they can see uh, everybody can join in. And I've also got, like I said, I've got something really cool for you at the end too that you all can take advantage of. So let's dive in and see what came, what I put in this quilty box for you. Yes, as a designer, we get to select what goes in the box for you each month. So since this was my month, I got to select what went in the box. So this is what you all, whoever, got it uh, got this month so you receive this little card and on the back of the card it tells you everything that's in that box okay so you also receive the little magazine which has the pattern instructions the um, the interview with me another little tutorial and a sneak peek at who is next month okay so here we go we're gonna open up the quilty box so how many of you know my good friend Deb Tucker, Studio 180 Designs? Well, look what I included in the box. I included her wing clipper ruler because you can use this to create the quilt that I designed. So that's the first thing that's in the box. The next thing that's in the box is my most favorite pins 
ever in the whole widest of the world. Yes, <laughs> these are long, fine pins that I use. And if you've ever taken a class from me, you um, will love, love, love these pins because I teach with these in class and I tell you what the benefits are. The finer the pin, the better, especially if you have a tightly woven fabric, they go through it like butter. So those are in the quilty box. Then you also have um, a spool of thread from the Blue Moon Aurifil collection that I selected for all of you. Um, each, each box is gonna vary what spool you get. So um, like you just saw in the mini that I showed you, it was a blue spool. This one is a purple uh, variegated because there are some purples in the Blue Moon collection, okay? Then you also get this beautiful package of uh, Blue Moon fabric to make that quilt. And I'm gonna show you the quilt because some of you um, will wanna see the quilt because I know that you can buy the quilty box after the fact, okay? So, but I wanna tell you up front, for those of you who received the quilty box, there was one little um, error that we caught uh, the, there are, there is, there's a snowflake fabric, there's a blue fabric in there, it's a snowflake fabric that you, you are provided with three eighths of a yard. That's for your geese only, okay? Um, in the pattern it says there's five eighths, um, but there's not. You've got a blue dot fabric, that's for your binding. So the snowflake fabric is for the quilt top only, the blue dot, is for your binding, just so you know. That was a little error. Quilty Box is gonna be uh, posting that on their Facebook site and I will repost it to uh, the, my Facebook site so that you have it. So there's, you have all the fabric you need and I'm gonna show you the quilt top. So if you, if you haven't seen it, here's the quilt, okay? So this is your quilt and it's called air traffic control and you'll be able to make this with the, the wing clipper, all the fabric you made, the thread that you got in the box and the pins, okay? So what I'm referring to, the snowflake fabric, see this blue fabric right here? That's the snowflake fabric. I actually used it here in my binding and that's why it was written with uh, five eighths of a yard. We had a little, uh, glitch in that and we put we put the uh, dot fabric in instead so just use the dot for your binding okay it'll look just as beautiful so no worries there okay you have everything you need so don't worry about that so I'm really really happy for those of you who received the quilty box and I can't wait please please post your quilts when you make them and hashtag it hashtag quilty box because Quilty Box wants to see it too. So whether you got the mini box or the big box, uh, we'd love to see it and I'd love to see it too. Hey, Elizabeth, how are you? So now, if you haven't, hit that share button. I'm gonna kind of give you a really kind of quick overview of how batiks are made. And I know that there are tons of batiks out there in the market. Um, but I'm going to give you, uh, because I, I work for Island Boutique, um, I'm going to give you how we do it there. And I think it's a fantastic process. And what I think a lot of people don't realize, um, especially when you're, you're not buying batiks, is, is every bit of that fabric is touched by hands many, many, many times. Okay. So you, ha there is, it's, it's a, a long process and something to be really truly appreciated. It is an artwork. It's an art form and there's a lot that goes into it. So I'm going to give you like the abbreviated version of it and there's lots, there's tons and tons of videos out there that you can also watch to kind of see, um, uh, to get, you know, a little more in-depth view of it. But I have some props here that were sent to me from Island Boutique, and some of my Island Boutique buddies are here with me watching today. So hit that share button so other people can join in. So I'm gonna kind of take you through kind of from the beginning. So a lot of you know, um, the right now, the current collection that I have out that was designed by Kathy Engel for me, for Island Boutique, um, is Fresh Pickens. So what I have with me today 
are the, the beginnings of that um, Fresh Pickings collection, okay? So it starts off with a concept or a drawing, okay? So these are some of the, the drawings that were done for the Fresh Pickings collection, okay? So you see the cherries and the lemons, okay? Then these are created into what we call chops. And we say it's C-H-O-P-S, but it's spelled T-J-A-P-S. Now what a chop is, it's a stamp, basically. That's the basic um, definition of it. The kind that are used in this batiking process are made out of copper, and they're all handmade. Now I've got two um, examples here of chops. One that was sent to me by Island Batik and one that I actually was lucky enough, there's a shop near me that I love to love to go to um, and I've bought some neat stuff for my house. They actually had one chop there a couple months ago and I snagged it up because they go over to Bali all the time and they say they're very hard to get and when they get them they tend to go, so I saw it and I picked it up. So I have two to show you. So when, after these designs are either hand drawn or done like on Illustrator or whatever, they go into and they get made into a chop. So now this is a chop, I'm gonna bring it in close. They're made out of uh, copper. So somebody sits and they, they form the design. So these are little dots is what this will end up being. Uh, and they're made out of a copper wiring or and and put onto what is like a stamp so that they can hold it while they're stamping the wax onto the fabric, okay? So this is what one chop looks like. So let me show you the other one that I got. This one's cleaned up a little bit because this is the one that I bought at the, the shop. So this is another copper chop, okay? So, and this is another design, and you can kind of see the copper in here. I think they um, must have boiled off the wax so that you can see the design, but it's like a swirl design. And you can see, if, you, if I get it real close, can you see the tiny little pieces of copper wire? They filled it in there to make it more solid, so uh, it gives you a more solid look on the batik fabric. So that's the, the chop which gets dipped into hot wax, then gets placed onto the fabric. The wax gets placed onto the fabric. So, as far as the fabric's concerned, so they start off with, you guessed it, it's a, just a basic white fabric, okay? It is very labor intensive, Alberta. It, it goes from a drawing to a chop to, then we start with the fabric. So there's a lot involved before it even gets to the fabric phase. So they start off with a white fabric. So the fabric is dyed and then it will get stamped. So what happens is they take the copper chops and they'll dip whatever the design is, they'll dip it into the hot wax and then they place it on that fabric. And they have to keep re-dipping it and re-stamping um, the fabric. And typically they work with 15 yard pieces at a time sometimes maybe less, um, but an individual person is doing all that stamping on that yardage, okay? Once that's all done, they'll re-dye the fabric. They, and, and I'm gonna show you a piece here, and it's kind of, kind of, gonna be kind of hard to see. You kind of almost have to feel it. It looks a little bit muddy, doesn't it? But just that muddy look, this piece of fabric still has the wax on it. Okay, so the wax kind of good because it's so hot, it goes through on both sides. Okay, so the wax stays on there, and where the wax actually is, is where that design is. So I'm not sure if you can tell or not if I hold it up close enough, but it is a floral design. Um, and once we're ready to remove that wax, when that wax comes off, that's how your design will be revealed. Okay, and in order to get that wax off, they have to, they have to immerse this in boiling water. And that's how the wax will come off of the fabric, okay? If there's any more dyeing to be done, they will do the dyeing. It dries out in the sun, uh, and that's how 
your that's the basics that's just the basics of batik making and that's what our batiks have to go through then what happens once they're done um we get back as designers we get back before they do the whole run of batiks we get back samplings so i'm going to show you some samplings that weren't chosen um, when kathy picked the the colors for the the collection these were some that did not end up in the collection okay so you can see the colors and there's even a design here that didn't make it either in the collection um, but these colors did not make it in the collection. We, we get back these, what we call, I guess, strike-offs. We get little samples back. So we can determine which colors and which design that we like best that will fit in the collection. So they do small bits first for us before you even see which ones are in the collection. Does that make sense? So these were not chosen. So... Um, I have a collection coming out in the fall where I got back a box of, I don't know, there had to be at least 250 maybe, or somewhere thereabouts, it at least seemed that way, of colorations that I did with the various different designs. And then I had to go through all those and narrow it down to somewhere between 20 and 30 colors uh, and designs within the collection. So we may get back this amount, but you only end up seeing this amount because it would be really timely and expensive process to produce all of those uh, colorations. So these are some that did not get chosen, but as you all know, this is what the line ended up looking like. So much uh, brighter, there's, uh, you know, the sherbet colors, there's these, um, you know, uh, um, multicolor ones that were chosen, uh, and they all work in harmony with one another. So there's a lot that goes into the process of batik making from start until you see it as the consumer. So as a quilter, you know, we really develop this appreciation for fabrics, but we don't always know what is behind that what goes on behind the scenes there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and we at island batik we actually are working two years ahead so what we're working on now you're not going to see for two years from now so uh it's a long long process a lot lot goes into it yes i'm lucky because i do get to pet the fabric yes I do. and you get to pet it too but you know you get to pet it when we're all done with it. So we like to keep it coming to you, and we hope you all like batiks. The reason why I love, love batiks, and I hope you all agree, is because batiks, when you look at them, they are so varied, and they, they, they have such depth of color. You can use them in any project. They don't ever, they're, they're, they're timeless, is what, what I like to say. There's very few fabrics in the industry that I think are timeless fabrics, and I think batiks are one of those. You, you can go back, if you've been quilting for any amount of time like I have, I can go back in my stash, and I've been quilting for almost 25 years, I can go back in my stash, and I can pull out a batik from 25 years ago, and it's still relevant today, because when I look at batiks, I look at them for color, texture, uh, just, I mean, everything about them just can fit in with any project. And the other thing I also tell my students, too, about Batik, some, some people, um, I don't even know what Buffy said, Teresa. What did Buffy say? Tell us. I'd love to know. <laughs> I didn't see what she said. But what I tell my students is use Batiks, couple them with other fabrics. Why not? Why shouldn't you use them with printed fabrics? You can use them with everything. Batiks are timeless. They are great for color. If you can't find the color that you're looking for in a project, go to a batik. It doesn't have to be a solid, or it doesn't have to be a print. Why not a batik? Use it, they're all cotton. They're all, they all commingle once another. It's hard to, it's hard to go back to cottons after using batiks. That's true. So, well, but the only thing is this 
Batiks are cotton, so you gotta remember that. They all couple well with one another. They are cotton, we use cotton as a base. They are just, uh, they're just an art form. Um, I think they're a nicer art form in a way because you get that depth of color, that texture when you cut it up. Nothing, uh, the, if I cut this batik here, I would never know that I got it from the same piece of fabric if I cut it down here. They just, they're, you can, they look, they're so varied, they're wonderful. So if you have any questions about the batik banking process, feel free to ask them. And I'm sure that um, my friends from Island Batik who are watching too, they, they'll be happy to answer if I can't answer for you. But I wanted, I wanted to bring, become, have you, do they bleed? Yes, they do bleed. Um, it depends. If, if you're, I'm, and I know you're asking, I know why you're asking this, it's because if you won't, don't wash them beforehand. So yes, they will bleed a bit, just like any fabric. What I do when I wash, because I know that's the next question coming up, when I wash them, um, if I pre-wash them, I always throw a couple shout color catchers in the wash with them, so that takes any of that excess dye out. Um, so I like any any fabric that has been dyed. I think you're always going to get a little bit of bleed. Some may bleed more than other others, just because certain colors bleed more. Um, so what is Cindy saying? So batik since they are boiled. Then that is like pre-washed, pre-shrunk, sort of, yeah, sort of. Um, so I would say that there is probably a little bit of that in there when they boil them. I don't know for sure. I can't guarantee it, <laughs> but I would think that maybe there is. So Mariana is asking for some fresh picking. So that kind of brings me to what I wanted to um, tell you about, and then I'll answer your question, Pat. Uh, Patricia, so if you want some fresh pickings, so what I'm doing for all of you, because this was kind of my batik Watch Me Wednesday, my batik speak, because we had the quilty box, and then we're having the, the, the talk on the batiks. I'm going to give you all, and it's only good through Sunday midnight, Mountain Standard Time, that's my time, okay? You can all go onto my website, and the batiks that I have in stock, which are Fresh Catch, and fresh pickings, and I'm also including my Aurifil collections in that. I'm gonna give you 20% off because you're watching, So, but you need to use the code, and it's all capitals, Batik Speak, B-A-T-I-K-S-P-E-A-K-2-0. And I will post that in, in the, um, uh, above the uh, video when I'm done, so you can get them at 20% off. Off. Somebody, someone says you have to wash them in salt. Um, that's a good question. I've never washed my fabrics in salt. Um, I'm not sure uh, if you, if you're thinking that that helps to retain the dye. It may. I'll defer to um, one of my island boutique buddies if you want to ju jump in and and um, talk about that. Yes, Microtech Sharp Needle. I use that for batiks. Absolutely, Cindy. When I teach, and I'm teaching, uh, actually I use it almost for any kind of um, quilting right now. I use a Microtech 7010 needle. It's a lot thinner needle. It's got a much a sharper uh, point. It leaves a smaller hole, and batiks are a little bit tightly, more tightly woven than some of your um, regular cotton prints. So yeah, a Microtech sharp needle is what I use, and I use a 7010. So if you have that, I would suggest using it. Um, I have great luck with it. So um, I think that answers that question. And as far as the washing, um, I most of the time don't have time to pre-wash uh, because I'm working on a deadline. On a long arm, Patricia's asking on a long arm, the needle size. That's a good question. Use a smaller needle. I don't know. The needle sizes on a long arm. I'm, I never have them right in my head for the long arm. I don't recall what size I use on my long arm. I could check back and let you know. Uh, Marion Bishop is saying 7010 on a long arm. I'm not sure. Uh, Marion, I guess it depends on your long arm. 
if they use different needles, I don't know. Hey Sally, how are you? One of my one of my gals who helps me out is watching. Hi Sally, I miss you so much. Can't wait for you to get working on the next one. <laughs> um, anyway, so if you missed some of the things that I was talking about, um, I, I'm going to just do a quick recap. We talk about starting batiks with a drawing, then they get made into a chop, a copper chop, all made by hand. That's one. Here's another. Okay, those are basically the stamps that are used to stamp the wax onto the fabric. We start off with a white fabric that is dyed, then stamped with the wax, then um, over dyed again. And this is what it looks like with all the wax on it before the wax is boiled off to show the pattern that was stamped on it with the batik chop. Okay, then we get back as the designers, we get back the little samples to, to choose from before it gets selected for a complete line of fabric. So that's it in a nutshell. <laughs> I hope I've answered some questions. I hope you've gotten some knowledge from today and I hope you're having fun with the Quilty Boxes and remember to um, hashtag it Quilty Box. Hit the share button so others can see the episode today but don't forget I'm giving you all 20% off the fabric that's in stock because guess what the Blue Moon fabric's going to ship soon to me so I need to make room for the Blue Moon fabric collection that a lot of you got in your Quilty Boxes so the code that you need when you check out on my website is batikspeak20, all one word, all capital letters, share the love. I'll put the code in the, um, uh, in the text above the video when I post it after I'm done. And I hope you all enjoyed today's episode. I'm so glad you joined me. Thank you, Buffy, for hashtagging Quilty Box. Excellent. And I will say, if, by the way, one more thing, one more favor. If you haven't gone over to Island Batik's Facebook site and you haven't gone over to Island Batik's website, please go over, like their page, and go onto their website and check out all the luscious batiks that they have in store. Great batiks, great designers, great people. And just so you know, too, I'm going to be heading there this weekend, so I might be posting some pictures from their warehouse. I'm hoping there's fabric there so that I can post some, some uh, fabric pictures, so stay tuned. And I'll see you all next week on Watch Me Wednesday, episode number 28. Take care, everyone, and have a fabulous weekend.